everyone, it's Joanna here from Inspired by Stamping and today we're going to color our summer bouquet stamp set with some watercolors and this is just such a fun stamp set to color. And so I'm going to be using some watercolor paper. I'm using some Arches hot press paper and I've already cut this out to size and just kind of fold it over and we're all ready to go. So it's only a two layer card so it's beautiful. Here are my stamp sets all laid out and I will put them on my blog of what I'm using this aluminum pan and it's just wonderful because it doesn't stain the palette and it's just nice it closes up and you can also stick your little finger there if you want to carry it around with you or if you stand and don't have a place for it. I just really love it and in a couple weeks I'm going to share with you all my colors and how I set up my watercolor and hopefully do a great tutorial for you. So here is our summer bouquet stamp set and I've already got it on a very large acrylic block here. And so I'm going to go and ink this up with some Distress ink and I'm using the Antique Linen. It's my favorite color to use when I watercolor. And so sorry for the moving of the video camera right now as they pound down and try to get all, everything all inked up. But I really want to make sure it's nice and inked. Now I'm going to stamp off on some scrap paper and then I'm going to stamp directly onto the watercolor paper here. And this just creates a very, very light image in which we're really going for, for that no line watercoloring image with those distressed inks. See, you can hardly see it and that's really what we're looking for. Now I stamped that image on the other side of my paper there and that is gonna be my guide. And that's really gonna help us while we're coloring. So here's my watercolor pen that I use. I absolutely love this pen. It is fabulous, you can watercolor right over it and it does not smear anything. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna place those dots that I can see and we're just gonna watercolor over it because once you put those watercolor layers over and over again, you won't have any idea where those little dots will be. And so what I'm doing right now is I'm already filling those in. And I'm just gonna move over to the other flower and I'm just gonna also just darken those little dots in the middle of that flower and just keep going so I really know exactly where they're at. And now I'm just gonna outline this one, this yellow flower that we're gonna paint yellow. I wish I had a brown waterproof pen, but I don't. And I think that would have worked out a lot better here. But unfortunately I don't have one so we're just going to use black. And there you can see the top of my head as I'm really trying to focus in and see. It's kind of hard to see because it is kind of light so it is a little bit tricky here to make sure that you get them all. And now I'm just going to grab my heat gun here and we're just going to set that ink and make sure that it's all nice and super dry so it does not a smudge or smear when we watercolor over it. And it has a tendency to curl the paper so I just want to hit the back side like so. And now we're ready to watercolor. Okay, so here I am all nice and zoomed in and ready to get started. As you can see, I have my reference on the side here and we're gonna be working on the pink. I'm doing this a bit differently this time to have the watercolor paint on my left side. I usually have it on my right side. So it's just gonna be a little bit different, but I really wanted you to see me blending the watercolors and also just painting the entire petals and the flowers here. So what I've done here is I've created a very light wash. And as you can see here, I'm going through each petal. Because this distressed ink is very light, it just helps if you watercolor each petal. And then when you keep layering and layering, you'll know exactly where to go. So I'm just going from petal to petal right now just really making sure that I know where it's at so when it dries, I'll know where to place more colors and more layers and really start to build on top of each other. So we're just doing a very, very light wash. When you're water coloring, you always just um, prime the paper basically and this just allows for that first layer to go on. So you're gonna wanna do this for all the flowers in this bouquet. So here I am ready to reference the picture on the side and I'm mixing a very, very creamy, consistency and this is going to be our darkest shade and I'm just going to lay down the darkest color here. We want to work fairly quickly here because we are going to do a wet on wet technique where we're going to blend and continuously move that watercolor all at the same time. So we're just going to lay down the outline where I think that the darkest layer is going to go and I'm placing that down right now. 
Now I'm just rinsing off my watercolor brush and creating a little bit of a lighter color. And that's where we're going to go. And this watercolor is still wet, so it's very easy to blend in with a different shade. And you can see how that just blends in beautifully. Now if it dries between, you get to it, as you're going to see right here on this last petal, it kind of set and dried. And I'm having a little bit of a harder time blending that in. But that's okay because that's just the first layer. And I'm going to be adding two, three, even four layers to really create a very bright vibrant color. So here I am again, I have washed my watercolor brush and I'm blending in with that lighter color. And again, I kind of set, I kind of took over the whole entire petal at one time. And I probably should have done one petal at a time to really get that consistency. And I really recommend that you do one petal at a time, but I'm going to go back over it. So I'm really not worried here with that first layer that I put down. And I really want to just make sure all three layers are nice and blended. So while that's drying, we don't want it bleeding into the other petals. I'm just gonna work over here now. So here I go again with the darkest. I've rinsed off my watercolor brush to create a little bit of lighter color. And now I'm creating the lightest color over in there. And you're just gonna continuously going. Here we go again, I'm putting down the darkest color here, washing my watercolor brush, blending it in, creating a little bit of a lighter color while it's still wet. Washing off my brush again here with no, basically no water, um, watercolor on my paint on my brush, no ink or paint on my brush here, and I'm just kind of blending it in again, and it just really just starts to set, and you can really see how I'm doing it. What you can't see here is that I do have a paper towel because if I don't really like to work with a whole lot of water on my brush, I like it will be a little bit dry here so I do dab off here when I do switch colors up like this like so and here I'm going to go over again now that is nice and dry so I'm going to add another layer of that really super dark color now here I wash that brush again and I'm only working with one petal at a time and you can see that it's just really transitioning again so I wash my watercolor brush off again and again, I washed off my watercolor brush and now I'm just blending the entire thing together and you can really see it just changing beautiful shades of that beautiful vibrant hot pink that I'm working with. And so again, just continuously going through wiping off um, my watercolor brush to get that lighter color and again up in the top area. So you can really start to see how beautiful that is starting to come together. And again, just hitting it with that super, super dark color and I know I'm sounding like a broken record over and over again but it's just really the key here to wash off your watercolor brush and get that little bit lighter and continuously wash off your watercolor brush to continuously um, keep that going into a lighter color so I really hope that you can see how I'm doing this I really hope that this is helping you and it will also help your watercoloring now I'm just going to play a little bit of music and you guys can watch me color these beautiful flowers. I think it's pretty much self-explanatory after that and you can see exactly how I'm coloring. I really hope that you enjoy to see and how I watercolor and maybe hopefully you can learn a few little tips and techniques on how I'm doing that in my blending techniques that I do use. So I hope you've enjoyed this and I'll be back in a little bit.
Well, I really hope that you've enjoyed watching me watercolor and blending all those beautiful petals and those, those flowers are just turning amazing. I had to turn off the video camera a few times because this actually is over an hour long coloring with this, um, but I really wanted to share with you my different techniques. So I had to do some cutting here because I didn't think that you would appreciate an over an hour long video. So here I am with the last flowers, um, the light pink here, and I'm using the beautiful opera rose and who doesn't love opera rose watercolor but it's just my favorite color and it's just really beautiful and I'm just doing that same technique over and over again that I earlier shared now going over with my second layer here and you can see when you place over another layer how beautiful and more vibrant those darker areas just really start to pop and you can really start to see a lot of definition out of your watercolor here now I ended up switching over to a littler brush. I'm using a number three, but I'm using a mini, mini one. I don't know if you guys have heard those. They're a mini tip. They're, the tips are a little bit um, smaller here and they don't hold a whole lot of water in them. So I'm hoping that you can see that you can use any kind of brush here. And I'll have these brushes on my website as well so you can see exactly what I'm using. I have a tendency to like these ones a little bit better because I don't use um, cold press watercolor paper and I usually like to have a little bit of a drier brush here and these little short tips they don't hold as much water as the longer tips do. So that's really starting to come together and it's really looking really pretty and I just love just blending it all in making sure that you can't see any of that gradation of the different colors the, um, the lighter to the darkest so you really just go over and make sure you have some smooth blending going on and how I do that is I just get my watercolor brush wet and then I dab off on a little bit of paper towel and then I just go over the entire petal making sure that those are just really soft lines from darkest to the lightest color and so now we're going to do our leaves here and again it's just the exact same technique as I did with the flowers so starting with the dark um, washing off my watercolor brush, dabbing it off on a little bit of a paper towel, and then going through and just continuously doing that over and over again. Starting with the darkest, a nice creamy consistency, and then washing off my watercolor brush a little bit, and then adding a little bit of a lighter, washing off my watercolor brush again, and then going over it with the lightest color here. And so on my watercolor palette, which you can't really see right here, is I have three consistencies lined up. I have one that's really, really th thick and dark with the watercolor paint. Then I have one that's a little bit watery. I'd call it maybe a, like a milk. And then I have one more mixture um, of just of one color that's really has a lot of water in it. So when you mix your watercolors, it's really basically about how much water you put in is how much dark and light you're going to have it. So the more water you add, the lighter the color is going to be. And always make sure to remember that your watercolor Watercolors are based on layers. So you're going, and when they dry, they always dry lighter than when you put them on. So sometimes you're like, wow, this is such a beautiful dark color. And then it dries and you're like, oh, that's not what I was hoping for. So you really have to go over layer over layer over layer to create that beautiful vibrant color that you're looking for. And so now I have my leaves almost done here. And again, I'm going back over. This is my second layer here. And I'm really just more and more layers as you go really creates that vibrant. So you really just got to have to keep playing with it. It's really a, a guessing game to know when exactly to stop and that's when you're feeling that you have reached that optimal color and that vibrancy that you really are looking for. Leaves are my absolute favorite thing to watercolor because I find that the leaves are a lot smaller and you really can truly get that blending in that you're really looking for and you can get that nice dark area to the lightest area too and it's just fun to practice over and over again and you will get better you just have to continuously practice um, learning to figure out how much water to have on your brush and also how much um, how you blend your colors and with how much water you have with those watercolor paints over and over again 
And so here I am, I've already got all the leaves done and so I'm just gonna show you how I'm gonna do the center flower here. And what I've done is I've mixed up a little bit of some brown and a little bit of gold and I'm just adding it down at the bottom of each tiny little area here. And it's actually about a medium consistency here. And so it's gonna be my medium color and I'm gonna let this dry a little bit here and then I'm going to go through it and I've got this nice rich dark super dark and I'm just going to dab just lightly at the very base of each flower and then when I'm done here and it's nice and dry I'm going to go back over it with a little bit of that goldish yellow ochre with a little bit of burnt sienna in there and that just really will blend all of those colors together. So just adding a little bit of the stems to those pretty little purple berries here and just adding a couple little dots here to the center. Again, I didn't put them in how I watercolored them because this video was really nice and long and I didn't think that I could fit everything in it all at once. Um, so now I'm going back over again with that burnt sienna and a little bit of yellow ochre and blending all three of those together. And you can really start to see that was my paper towel that I'm using. Okay, so now let's put this card together. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to use that same marker that we used at the beginning. And because we went over layer of layer, we're going to make those pretty little dots nice and dark again. So I'm just gonna go over them, make sure that they're nice and circled and they just really, really pop out big time now. So I'm gonna grab my mini Misty here and just zoom out for you so you can see and turn off that big, huge light. I'm just using some sunshine here. Good old sunshine always has the best videoing. And I'm just gonna add my sentiment in the side. And I decided to go with a little bit of brown this time because I just thought it would be a little bit softer than a rich, dark black. And I'm just going to have to do a few layers here. So I'm using that rich cocoa and I'm just gonna stamp, and you have to stamp at least three or four times. See how light that was? Now I have to go over it a few more times and just wipe off, because I accidentally got some on there. And one more time, and I dropped it, so now I really have to wipe it off. <laughs> Even I dropped my ink pads, and I just go over it again, and the how that just pops after that third one is just amazing. So I'm just gonna use some um, foam dimensionals here and place extra ones. Watercolor paper, has a tendency to be extra heavy you're talking about a 140 pound cardstock here so it's nice and heavy so you really need to support the middle there so it doesn't bow down and just line it up perfectly like so and there you have it all nice and done make sure it's straight and it's all nice and done. And then here you have it, two beautiful watercolor cards. I really hope that you've enjoyed today's tutorial. If you have any questions or you wanna see something a little bit better, let me know and I can see if I can just cut and paste and see if I can just get one part of that petal for you or that flower or something that you're really looking for. I really hope that you've enjoyed today's tutorial. I um, hope to see you again soon. Thanks so much for stopping by.